So I guess my next question is, why do people hire contractors? Hmm. So before we get to our perspective, it's always question. good to look at the other side. Yeah. yeah. So why would you as a company want a contractor? Well, the first thing is seems like the obvious answer. It's like, oh, I don't have that skill. We need a guy who can do web stuff. We need mm-hmm. someone who is skilled at doing networking. That's that's usually what people think of when they see contractor. They're like, oh, someone who can do this technical mobile thing. stuff. Yeah. So, some yeah. Mis- some missing skill set that you know isn't on your team. You just they don't want to have to spend the time training internally. Mm-hmm. They just reach out. So I, I would say that's what people think most of the time, but I'll be honest, that's super rare. Hmm. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, and I'm in a lucky position where I do get some jobs under that banner right. because I've been doing VR for six years. I've done mobile development, app development, web development, backend stuff, web stuff. Uh, I've built web <laughs> APIs, service, and because of this, every so often I'll get a job that almost exclusively falls in my lap because everyone else they went to said, oh, we can do the Unity bit can't do the web bit. We, do the web right. bit. we can't do the Android bit. So having that sort of uh, large swath of experience usually comes in handy. The but, keyword you put on your on your LinkedIn is full stack. Yeah, full stack for web stuff. Yeah, definitely. That's the one thing that, that it's very useful because these days there's a lot of integration um, between web client front end stuff and even Unity stuff. Like it's a lot of there's a lot of crosstalk these days. Um, but I, I, we'll get to what you should study and what you should learn later. That's also in the list. Don't worry, we'll cover that. Um, all I'm saying is that that's actually rarer than you think. I don't think the majority of the impetus for people hiring me comes down to, oh, you're just uniquely talented at this one thing. So that's mm-hmm. one thing. To, it's okay. You don't need to be like an expert at a particular thing. Mm-hmm. There's, there's more important reasons. So the next one is uh, grants and art projects. And I would say this is a very large portion, one that you'd be surprised how large. Mm-hmm. A lot of projects and contract work I'll get comes from people who, um, in general, they work in a different field. So you've got somebody who's an artist who's really well known in an art sphere, and maybe they want to make a uh, a VR um, project that's like a VR gallery thing. They don't, they have no experience with VR. They don't even know they don't even know what Unity is or game engine is. They could be completely separate. They might have some experience. They might have worked with other people. Who knows? Um, but but they might not. And so realistically, they're like, I have a thing. I have an idea. I can apply my talent, my art, my modeling, my sound design to this. But I need someone to like pull up the rest, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, I'll slow down. I've just I have so much to follow, go through that I'm I'm kind of <laughs> racing. So let me let me pull it back a little bit. Uh, yeah, so well, it that, could be that grant and art project thing you mentioned. That is how I've gotten all my Unity work. To be honest with you, now that I think mm-hmm. about it, uh, it's under the umbrella of yeah, we are this company and we want to uh, portray our product or our brand in some artistic way. Um, maybe with a game, maybe with some sort of interactive video. And that's where you're like, okay, well, I can use Unity to achieve this. And there's also subsets of that that are particularly popular. Like, for example, there was a big trend for a while where almost every client that came to me, independently of themselves, wanted some kind of painting in VR project. It just Mm. happened to be the thing that every client decided they wanted. Um, Same with AR. It might be, oh, AR is hot right now. Everyone's like, I want to pitch to my clients to have some little floating model of a version of a project. So that's the (laughs) next thing. Um, but that's one half. The other half is there's a lot of people who will come up with an idea. And I've noticed this in film is, is quite common. You'll have indie filmmakers or, um, again, art installation stuff. Or another example would be things like uh, museums that would have touch touchscreen panel things mm-hmm. to interact with or those sort of interactive experiences in a in a museum or in a um, any kind of, like I, I work for one for a, a technology firm where in the lobby of their company, they wanted to explain what they do as a tech firm. Hmm. So they built this cool little VR thing where it would like fly you through stuff and demonstrate nodes and bouncing back, you know, packets of data. And they wanted to kind of visualize that because they'd have tours with kids nearby and that kind of stuff. That's cool. So there's these kinds of projects that come up. Um, and again, some of them are Unity, some of them are VR, some of them are not, whatever. But they tend to get funded by some foreign body like they get funded by either um some government grant or some art institution and so for them it's like i have money i need to make this thing i have a vision hire somebody to do it and so so that's what i mean that's not about technical ability in one area pretty much anybody who's relatively familiar with unity could do it it's just getting your name on that board as as someone that they contact um so that's the grant art stuff uh, yeah, the other one is other industry, which is similar. That's like, uh, I think that's more like what you were saying, Charles, is that you've got a company who's like, I have this product and I want to, 
I want to visualize it. So for example, mm -hmm. I work in architecture and I want to, to demonstrate something. So I would make a VR model to demonstrate it to my boss or to my team or to sell the idea of right. going forward with this. Uh, so that tends to be sort of a, we'll just move to another area, you know? Yeah. Then there is, oh yeah, prototypes. This is surprising. This is one that comes up a lot as well. Hmm. You'll actually get bigger companies who want to do a prototype of their project. So basically, th their real goal is to spend three years internally building a big project. Hmm. But rather than start that, they can go to a small studio or a small group and say, we'll give you 30000 or 50000 or 80000 and we'll say, spend four months, make us this thing, just so we can see if we like the idea. Mm -hmm. Because to you, that's insane. That's like a full big project and all this kind of stuff. But to them, it's the difference between three years development or can we yeah. just test if this works? And they'll just throw it at They'll be like, whatever, I'll just throw it, throw an idea out and we'll see if it works. Um, and that comes up quite a lot. There's a lot of projects that have never seen the light of day. And this <laughs> is this is frustrating when people ask, like, what's your, what's your portfolio or your whatever else? These are often under NDA because they don't want people to know that someone else did the prototypes for their work. They would do it <laughs> internally or in-house or whatever. Um, so then, oh, the last one is just they're busy. And this is another one yeah. very common. They started a project, project's going well, lots of areas. They actually have the talent in-house to do it, but there's just so much to do and the deadline's getting too close. If they just need to take a portion of it and say, look, can someone do this for us? And we don't have time to onboard new staff, teach them the system and so on. We, we, go, we go to somebody who's experienced with taking a project on and just running with it and just doing a thing and coming back to us. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, which is, has its pros and cons for you, but this is <laughs> something that happens. Yeah, the, the big con is that at that point, the company's already under stress and the team's under stress, so you're integrated yeah. into a stressed out environment. Yes, very, very much so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you also will get no feedback because they'll basically give you a project and say, we need this done. And you'll be like, so is this good? And they'll be like, well, whatever, just this thing's more important. Thank you to all of my patrons and a special shout out to Jennifer Irwin, Christian, Urizer, Alwyn Kuravilla, Umit Sarin, Anton, Mighty Possum, Amar Duranovic, Dustin, Nav from Academy of Games, Usuf Ali Castle, Iron Alex, Drond, Dark Rush Photography, Glasswell Entertainment, and R Star. Thank you. <laughs>